Good morning. Today we are going to be talking from John chapter 1 and verse 16. It says the following, And of his fullness we have received grace upon grace, or grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Here we can see that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. When it talks about Jesus Christ here, uh, whereby grace and truth came, he's talking about the resurrected Jesus. When Jesus was raised from the dead, the influence from God upon human beings to give them the fullness of God bodily came to all of us. So God raised Jesus from the dead. He gave him the power to came, come up from the grave. And by that grace that the Father raised him, we can now be graced unto the same. The law came by Moses, not grace. The power to have life came by Jesus, not Moses. We need to understand that when we read the law of Moses, the purpose of the law is to show us our inability to have holiness and righteousness, to show us our inability wherein we fall short of the glory of God. That is the purpose of the law. So that every person that thinks that he can live without the grace of God, that he can have the opportunity to test out his own abilities to see as if he can truly live without the grace of God. But after the law was given, showing the Jews that they cannot live by their own power, declaring the Gentiles as worshipping the wrong gods, therefore showing Jew and Gentile as sinner, we can know that we today cannot live by the law. That means we cannot attain unto eternal life by the law. The law cannot make us holy. The Bible says that through the law is the knowledge of sin. It even goes so far as to say in 2 Corinthians 3 that the um, ministration of death was written on stones. So we find that through Moses the law was given, but the power unto holiness, the power unto righteousness, the power unto eternal life came through Jesus the Christ, Jesus the resurrected, Jesus the man seated at the right hand of the Father. Many of you have heard me say that Jesus where he is today is God's word for you. Jesus where he is today is speaking to you and he is telling you that who he is and what he is is what he brings to humanity. Hebrew says that in the old ways or in the old days God spoke in many ways through the prophets unto the fathers. But in these last days, he has spoken through the resurrected Jesus. So what I want to conclude is this. When you read Moses, you are reading the law. You are not reading grace. Grace is the influence of God unto eternal life. And through Jesus was given grace upon grace. What that means is... The Father graced Jesus or influenced Jesus' body with the power of the Holy Spirit to raise him from the dead so that through the resurrected Jesus, you can now be influenced by Jesus unto the very life of God so that you don't have to try and gain the life of God by your own works, but as a gift that comes from God. Let us read it again. It says, For the law was given by Moses, but the power unto eternal life and the truth about what God wants for humanity came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son, the resurrected Jesus, which is now in the bosom of the Father, in other words, who ascended into heaven, he 
has declared the Father. He has declared how the Father can give eternal life to mortal people. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? When we read this passage, we see a wonderful conclusion of the New Testament. This is what John writes. Grace, the power unto life, came by Jesus. Through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 55 onwards says this. The power of sin is the law. The power of sin is the law. Not that the law is evil. The law simply shows us that we don't have the power unto eternal life. It shows us that the good that we want to do, we cannot do. But when we behold the grace of God, we see the good that God wanted to do being done in us by God. You know, the good that we want to do, we many times find that we cannot do it. But the good that God wants to do, He can do it. And the good that God wanted to do is to give us his life as a free gift. And he can get that right. As we behold the grace of God, we are seeing the power of God that brings forth a brand new life in us. As we behold the law of Moses and try and live by that, we are seeing our own inability and how we cannot gain to the life of God by our own works. So, in conclusion, if you read the Bible, whenever you read the Bible, read the Bible with that in mind. When you see what you must do in order to, uh, uh, when you read the Bible from the perspective of the law, you will see that it shows you your inability. But always read it in this way. When you see something that disqualifies you, something that says you are bad and all those kind of things, read it with this in mind that there is a Jesus that was raised from the dead that truly revealed the power of the Father and he has come to give you life. So whenever you read the Bible, read it to see the grace of God, which is the power of the resurrection, which gives you eternal life as a free gift. Never read the Bible to see what's the next five steps you need to do in order to get a smile on God's face. Isn't God absolutely good? He's a good God. He loves us. He cares for us. By grace are we saved through faith. And that is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. God bless.